My name is Matt Milano. I'm a live artist and graphic designer. Um, I also do therapeutic uh, painting, so I put together paint sessions in Dolores Park uh, permanently, and um, I just try to get people to break down barriers that they put up in their lives. And the way I used to, when I said I couldn't do something or I didn't understand something, I, I would just leave it at that and never really challenge myself to learn that or understand it. So by doing this with painting, something that I'm thoroughly passionate about, it's a language that I speak and understand and can back up and validate. And that way I can relate that to anybody's walk of life, even if it isn't art necessarily. It's just the practice of breaking down those barriers and telling yourself that you can do it. And I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a common practice that people just naturally say, oh, uh, that's, that's a little too much for me to kind of grasp or to take on. And, and when they end up changing that and making the switch, you just see this incredible weight lift off their shoulders. And I think that's my ultimate goal in life is to keep providing that for, for humanity. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about the origins of uh, your artwork. When did mm -hmm. you first start um, practicing art, doing art? Yeah. And how did you know that this was going to be your passion? Uh, ever since I was really young, actually, I, um, my parents got divorced when I was really young, and one of the things I would do to kind of go off and kind of handle it and be able to uh, accept it was being able to escape through my artwork, and I, I would be able to just kind of use that almost like as a meditation, but at a young age, I didn't understand it as that. That's what I was doing. Um, but I would just continue to do this because this was where my comfort zone was. Um, and as I would do that, it would trickle into going to school and being around my peers. And each time I would ever hear somebody like, or feel somebody's presence looking over what I was doing and them commenting in a, in a way that made me feel like, oh, I'm doing something kind of cool here. It, it, that was like a feeling that I would always remind myself of. But I, it, there was all this other pain that I was dealing with with that divorce and then I, I, growing up as you know a teen and trying to find my, my place where I fit in with people. Because I was into sports, but I was more into individual kind of things and being on, doing my own thing. So like skateboarding kind of took over because I was able to go off and be my own you know, coach and push myself however long I wanted to. Um, and that was very similar to, to, to art, too. You know, I, I was like feeling like I, I was more into illustrations. I wasn't into um, painting at all, actually. I, in fact, hated painting growing up because with a, being an illustrator, you're all about staying within the lines, having kind of like a, a structure to work off of. And if you ever went outside the lines, it's like, oh, scrap it, throw it away. But, um, I really just kind of paid attention to how it made me feel when somebody commented that they liked what I was doing. And I, I always wanted to do something I loved for a living. So as I grew, I started to you know, experiment with drugs in high school and out, right outside of high school. And I barely graduated high school, but when I did, I, uh, I attended uh, junior colleges in my immediate area which mean I, I really just got really good at skating skate parks and playing hacky sack. Um, I never really went to those classes, but what I, I had like this epiphany that came over me in, in like one of my psychedelic trips, and it was just me sitting next to an older version of myself. And they were comfortable, confident. I knew it was me, but I kept asking all these questions and he just smiled at me and wouldn't say anything. And then right before this spirit or entity like disappeared, all he said was, you know what you need to do. And then poof, it was gone. And so that day I, w I went to my house and I went on my stepdad's computer for probably the third time ever. I at that point I never even knew how to check an email. But I, I went online and I, I knew that I had to get out of my comfort zone because I, I realized that this was the thing that I loved so much but it was holding me back just as much as the love I had for it. And I knew that the only way for me to really grow and give myself a chance at what I wanted to do for a living 
and it was to break free of all the things that I would give myself excuses why I couldn't do it because you know I had a girlfriend and I couldn't leave her behind. Um, I had you know my family that I didn't want to be too far away from because I'm from, from like Italian family were very tight. Um, and then I also was like not familiar with where I decided I wanted to go, and I, which was LA. I had visited there quite frequently because I had an aunt and uncle that lived there, but um, I, I wanted to like learn more about it because I was a skater, and that's kind of like a skate culture. But also, I knew that there was a ton of art and a lot of an insp inspiration to kind of uh, fuel this this f this passion that I had. So I, when I moved away, I. I got down to the art school and, you know, completely computer illiterate. So it was like speaking Mandarin, taking classes in Mandarin. So I just kept like dismissing those classes and sticking with more of the hands-on fundamental classes um, in the graphic design field. So that can only take you so far. I mean, you'll get good at packaging and such, but you need to know that as a tool instead of something that was what I would always do would be like, ah, I can't do it, I can't do it. I was putting up those walls. But um, I, uh, once I, I kind of got myself in trouble by dropping too many classes, my cumulative GPA was going down and I didn't realize that's what happened. So I had to write an appeal letter, get let back into college. And from that point, my mentality changed again. I said, I need to sit in the front of class, I need to come early, stay late, until I get this and I understand it. And it didn't take that long, it took like three months. And then I was like, boom, 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 and I related everything and it started to work like a tool. Well, the same thing happened when I was thinking about, okay, well, there's this workshop that's being offered to all the majors. Uh, it's a free workshop and it's about painting. And I said, okay, well, I'll take that. And when I, uh, I took the class, uh, or the workshop, I was the only one who showed up. So I'm like in the classroom, and the, the teacher walks in, and he, he kind of laughs and looks around. He's like, so you're the only one here? And I'm like, yeah, I, don't, I looked around, and I don't see anybody else, so I think so. And sure enough, well, he's like, well, the first thing out of his mouth was one of the things that just blew my mind and changed the way I do artwork. And he said, well, it makes no sense for us to just feel trapped in this room. It's such a nice day out, you want to go set up at the park next to school. And I, I was just like, I never thought of that concept of, of trapping myself into a, a confined space where there's nobody else around to gain the opportunity to be motivated, inspired, um, or just simply entertained. You know, and I, I felt like I had the ability by all those times of practicing drawing and now I'm like getting to a point where I'm kids in my own class are recognizing the stuff I'm doing so I, I, now, I, now I'm at an art school so I know that I'm on the right track somewhere. I might as well you know, provide this for something where people can see it rather than just keep it to myself and only a couple see people seeing it in class. So I loved it. I was like, oh my God. And so I, I probably had this goofy look and just the same way I, I, I exited the class following him. I was just like falling all over the place trying, I was so excited. And then when we went and set up, the way it was just, the thing that also really stuck with me was not only like the techniques he taught me and which how to paint, which is like, you don't only have to just use paint brushes, use your hands. Use your face even if you want, you know, use a cloth and get the textures and blend color in a different kind of way. I was like, wow, like, that makes it feel like I can do anything or I can, you know, it made me feel invincible. But it was also like just somebody having a conversation with me in a park. It wasn't somebody talking at me like a lot of teachers can t tend to feel like. So I fell in love with the way he was telling me how to just be myself and the value in it, and how to stop at certain parts and appreciate what, you know, I have to let this layer dry. Well, now I can just have a beer and just sit back and chill out. It's just like, whoa, it's like, okay, it's okay to take pauses in life and reevaluate something and take a step back. And it's, it's not taking like three steps back. That's like taking three steps forward because you're teaching yourself the importance of patience. And, and 
and time is something that can frustrate us so much. And I always get overwhelmed with that, and I always tend to forget it. That you know, I have to be patient because in time it will come. I can't expect it to come overnight. If I want something to be successful at, I'm not going to learn it overnight. It's going to be over a period of time. And so I never had to take another art class, painting class, I should say, after that, because uh, that was enough inspiration and understanding. I felt that I needed to take with me going forward. So I just became self-taught ever since then. That was just in 2009. And I, now I'm, I teach these classes and these workshops at cacao ceremonies or festivals or just here in the park. And I, I teach people techniques that I taught myself just by saying, I, never saying I can't. I'm just gonna try this. I'm just gonna try this. I'm gonna just try this. Oh, that work. Or I'm gonna just stop for a second, wait. Maybe I'll see something that I didn't see when I was in that moment. You know, so. Very helpful. Yeah. Um, I hear that, you know, ever since you were a child, you were, um, you found comfort in becoming independent. Right. And perhaps that had something to do with the dissolution of a, a nuclear family at one point. Right. And so I think from that point, you just knew how to, or you were comfortable in being by yourself. Right. And, and at the same time as being comfortable being by myself, I was also just as comfortable with putting myself down, making myself feel bad about myself, telling myself um, about my imperfections, about things were my fault, even when they weren't my fault. It was just, it felt good to put myself in a pity party. I mean, I was the captain of that ship, and I, I wasn't about to steer to land and, and try to, you know, figure out what it felt to be grounded and back to what makes me the person I am that thing people like about me, you know? Rather, I was thriving off of the isolation and feeling bad, and it made me become mysterious and I would always dress in black and it was just like became part of my identity uh, some of that kind of helped me in the future with uh, the times where I felt lonely I was I was familiar with it so I could kind of handle it but it also I saw all the very bad damaging things because it, it, it started to build up and it got to a really dark place there was a point even um, you know, last year even, it was. It got to a point where it boiled over, and I was on my bike ride, and I rode over to the bridge, and I, I got off my bike, and I looked down, and I was this close to jumping over the edge, and I got a phone call from a buddy of mine that just simply said, what's up, man, you want to come hang out? I was just thinking about you. And it, like that phone call, I tell him to this day, like that phone call probably saved my life because I had been in my head so much telling myself that nobody cared about me, I wasn't good enough, and all these damaging things for so long, it just got to a point where it caught me on a lonely day and I couldn't take it anymore, I needed a way out. But instead of giving up, I gave myself another chance to turn it around because I had already done it a few times before, deciding to leave my comfort zone, go to art school to find myself. And, you know, and then another time where I decided I had, had to break up with a certain girlfriend that I was just, I was gonna, I had like plans to marry her and all this, but I had realized she wasn't happy with the person I was and wasn't accepting of, of that. And I, I needed that in my life because I needed it for myself. And when I woke up and I moved out and got into the new place I moved into, it introduced me to a whole world of people that are just like me, artists, musicians, um, event planners, photographers, just people that just love to vibe off another person, you know? Those are the kinds of values that I, I are the kind of interests that pique mine and, and fuel mine. Um, and so I had moved back home and I, I had like these expectations of coming back to these friends that I 
used to put up on this pedestal because these are the people I grew up with. These are the people that put that kind of idea in my head when I when I left. Like uh, they're still gonna love me when I come home. They're still gonna be the same people. And then they just weren't. And it was very discouraging. It was very hurtful. And very, a big letdown and hard for me to accept. And and that's what was the that tipping point. It was like oh, there's so much that I've been through. And there's this now. I can't even come back to like my own family. You know. And then that phone call came, and I gave myself that another shot at it. And ever since I decided to do that, my perspective on life changed to always being positive, always looking at the bright side of things. There's grass always greener on the other side. That just always is at the forefront of my day. Like, if I woke up tomorrow, or if I woke up today, like, these are things to value and appreciate just that by itself because like bottom line where I was fortunate enough to grow up and be here from I mean it's stupid to think that I could be depressed about anything because I was and, it, and that's what I dealt with because naturally I, I inherited that at a young age from a very traumatic experience but I also developed the brain capacity to know that that wasn't the end and there's always another day that's going to bring you a whole new perspective on your life and there's also a universe that lives within me that there's only a few times in my life that I'll get a chance to make contact with and when I do I, I recognize that and I pay attention because the universe always provides me with these hidden messages and you can call it something besides the universe but there are messages that are sent to you and if you pay close attention to them and you take those directional pivot points it really leads to amazing opportunities and I, I couldn't be happier today I'm just I'm full of life full of love full of this knowledge of suffering suffering and but not giving up on it even when it's, I mean, literally just a railing away to just hop over, you know, it's, it, but it's just I'm not giving up, I'm not giving in that easy because uh, life in itself deserves a better shot than just what you already given it at that point because there's so many things in this life that are so beautiful and like this bubble I put myself in, it, it kind of clog, uh, clogged that view or clouded that judgment that that viewing or that perspective so once I broke out of that moment, it, was just, it felt a lot better like a lot bigger place than what I was making where I was staying I hear that there's a when one chapter closes in your life there's something on the other end of the rainbow in right. the form of colors friends musicians artists yes and that one lifestyle that you expected would be a certain way in your head mm -hmm. When reality doesn't match that, like I think your maturity came from when you let go of that, you know? Absolutely. And so uh, I think there's a lot of transformation that is, that is the transformation. Uh -huh. uh, Absolutely. That, that is your shift. Yeah. And so my next question is, how does that translate into your art? Do you see an evolution within your art itself? Yeah, I, th I think that along with that and the going to art school teaching me about composition choice um, and doing a lot of research you when I was having a moment I, you know I had to go and kind of like lose my mind and sometimes I would do art but I started falling in love with research and finding out a bunch of different um, and I, these are predominantly just through different kinds of artists that are from around the world so all the different art they were doing but as I was looking at the art they were doing, I was looking at the background, where they came from, the struggles, and so their compositions made more sense to me. And I've always been uh, intrigued by just tribal art and primal kind of style art. And uh, a lot of that has to do with a lot of spiritual um, guidance and, and connection. So I, I related to that because I felt like that was that epiphany that I had was came from a spiritual realm. Um, so when that happened, I plugged that in with all the pain that I felt and said, "I'm going to marry these two, and I'm going to just 
use this for a composition choice, for color usage. So a lot of my paintings will have really bright colors, but then I'll black out the borders to really pop out all that, that color, but it's also that darkness that was always around me. It's kind of like a metaphor for that. It's always gonna be there, but it, it always confines all this bright energy, this full of energy of this life that I feel. And I, I, I always kind of put it like that, but I also kind of use it as a border. But as for a concept, I felt like that made the more sense. I was just telling them earlier, I was gonna maybe paint over it, and then I got a couple compliments to make me think elsewise. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can keep, you know, it depends, you know, like, sometimes I, I it's, is it oil? No, acrylics. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I did oil at first, and it's crazy because you keep changing it because yeah. it doesn't dry. Right, right. So I kind of got into acrylic because it's a little faster. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you know. You gotta know. I actually, I got better. Yeah. Because sometimes you keep going back, and after a while you go, God, I wish I hadn't changed that again. Yep. You know, it was better the first time. Yeah. <laughs> but there's that temptation with oil, you know. Yeah. And with acrylic, though, you can still add to that or change it. Yeah, exactly. But it won't be so permanent, you know. As well. Yeah, yeah, right. But I like it. Thank you. You got talent. Appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, it. Good. You too. Thank you. It's part of the reason I come to the park is you get a bunch of different people that say really cool things and relate to what you're doing and you've never met them before and it's just like, oh, okay, more validation for me that I'm not alone in this world and people are like me. <laughs> that, is, that was a really perfect example of like we got to witness what you just described earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, your artistic process, I noticed that you said earlier about painting things over and not painting things over. Mm -hmm. So like life mm -hmm. is creating art also as painful, like when it comes to like choosing and knowing what, where to go and mm -hmm. Should I change it? Should I not change it? You know, what is that feeling like? What's the process? <laughs> At first, it's almost impossible to recognize until you go through it and suffer consequences of some sort. There's some form of suffering that happened for me where I had I had made the recognition about it and and started to take it on as like, okay, this is something I need to discipline myself with or recognize that's happening and then learn that there's other options instead of the ones I keep choosing that bring me right back to the slump where I keep putting myself. So by observing the times where I felt like I was just almost like panicking to make a decision in, in life, um, I just t started taking deep breaths, started kind of meditating, doing by self, like uh, self meditating with like breathing rhythms. That's what kind of helped me calm myself down. Um, taking myself on like uh, like long skates, like where I would go on like a skateboard ride, and just to just kind of clear my mind, go on a walk, um, and then kind of come back to that situation and, and make a de decision and. Uh, and it really helped me, even with uh, uh, conversations I was having, arguments I would get into, they became less and less and less by me just calming down and giving myself an opportunity to remove my own personal attachment to that moment and give a moment to see it from different perspectives in that conversation and then revisit where I was and, and then I now have like a new outlook and I'm like okay well I, I was jumping to conclusions or oh I, you know I, I reacted to you know aggressively um, and does that apply to your art process? 100% yeah because uh, there's times where I'll, I'll start thinking of an idea I'm like okay I, I got it down and I'll start splashing color around and then when I, I pull out black right away because I want to make some cool um, a cool uh, face or a, a structure of something and I think I got it and I immediately go straight with black to outline it. It's like, well, I 
I was way too aggressive there. I should have given myself a chance to kind of really like slowly apply it to make it look exactly how I wanted it to rather than applying a really dark color over light colors and, and now I can't go back, <laughs> you know, unless I spray it down and saturate, or, you know, not saturate it, but dilute the whole thing and then wipe it away and like start over. So and that it was like, like more work. Yeah, it becomes more work. You learn that, and you learn that you you lose some paint and um, some money in the process because you know art equipment is very expensive. And, and do you beat yourself up for it initially? No, I, I I did, but that's so much energy to to put into making me feel bad about myself, and it's just such a swift reminder of what I worked so hard to wait, break away from doing. And it's just like, go okay, now I'm going back to my old habits. I'm, I'm not gonna allow that. And if I do, it's only gonna be for about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna think about something positive and switch that and switch and, so and keep, yeah, transformation. transformation. Like knowing, being aware. Being that aware it's that happening. it's natural. There's no escaping it, but I'm not the only one. And if I can be strong and get through it, that's gonna encourage or inspire somebody else to do the same thing. Wow. And what's what's more rewarding than in being able to provide that for complete strangers or people that might need it, you know? Because yeah. not everybody has someone. Not everybody has a outlet or are aware of options to, to find one. But, you know, by, Sometimes when you seek for help is when you just are, you're just looking and you look around and you might find something that actually is important. And I think that by doing things like what we're doing about the love story is providing a, maybe a chance, a, a new kind of uh, trend of, of helping people with one another and getting back into becoming more aware of the importance of human interaction instead of human distractions like such as technology. Technology really bothers me at times, at other times I'm proud of it, but it's taken away a lot of human interaction that's super important because without, without that you feel very alone and you feel like you are not a part of the party sometimes, not a part of the group. It's just not a cool thing to feel like. And some of the best conversations I have in my life are human-to-human -human interactions, not on the phone, not on text messaging, not on emails. It's just because you gain more out of it. And you, you look, hear, see, and taste how it, how it is in real life. And, it, it just gives me more hope than what te technology ever was able to do. Yeah. And I also hear that you can transfer your heart and your... The way you communicate to people is through your campus. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So there's that modality yeah. of really, you know, bonding people together. Right. Um, can you tell us kind of... What you usually, like, what what objects, people, or, uh, uh, yeah, what, what, pe what kind of people or objects do you attract um, when it, onto your canvases? Like, what are some of the thematic things you paint about? Sure. Um, I do a lot of, um, like, I, I think about, like, chapters that came and gone in my life and I kind of play off of that so a piece that I did um, it was a story it's like a story of this woman that's on her knees and she's got her back facing a guy that is on his one knee bending over picking up his head off the ground but she's holding a platter of heads and she's reaching back asking for his and she is just like this bright flame kind of bright energy that's reaching towards the sky and kind of almost like in like it's being pulled to the sky and then he is all blue and uh, like cooler colors and 
has his face kind of evaporating in like ghostly, a um, ghostly manner, but yet his head is like a, a solid uh, tribal head. And above him is this, this energy, uh, unique character, like breaking out of him and evaporating to the sky. And what that kind of symbolized for me, and in particular this piece, was the ability to lose your mind in order to find yourself. And allowing yourself to turn your back on all the other times you, you caved into that comfort zone and not ever challenged yourself, but just gave your head to somebody else to hold. And it's real, you know, real beautiful and there's nice things about it, but there's also so much you're, you're not allowing yourself to find. So by going to pick your own head up and getting ready to put it back on, it's like you just broke free and are allowing yourself to learn so much more about what life can provide you and what you can find out about yourself. So that was just one of my composition. I'm going to send you a picture of it. Yeah, so, I would love that. Yeah, that, that was uh, that was specifically done at um, a festival where a lot of these festivals that I paint with these, I call them master painters because they're unbelievably talented and they do these incredibly detailed paintings. But they're all very dream, dreamsical and uh, uh, very technical and mechanical looking. And when you look at them, you don't almost you you really almost almost feel like it's just an energy field of sorts, or just a variety of them. And the compositions were never really speaking to me in like a, a thought-provoking way of what it can mean, because that what I described to you, my last painting, could be looked at three or four or five, ten, fifteen, thirty different ways. Um, and my idea of providing kind of like a limitation on what you can kind of see and get out of a canvas allows me to have a chance to tell a story with the next painting I do and either make a series that I can connect these all to and so I'll, I'll do a series of just different types of goddesses like where I, I, moments I felt like I, I walked into a festival and you know, there's a moment where you see a beautiful girl and there's like a light that beams on her and there's just like, it's just a crazy experience. Those are one of the things I'm motivated about. Like, it's just like beautiful women that are in this world. It's just, it's an inspiring thing to have because they put out energy that I appreciate. Just the same way as sunsets and sunrises. So I, I take a variety of different sunset and sunrise ideas and incorporate them into um, I'm very attracted to languages, so I uh, took a hybrid of languages and created my own called Language of Light. And it blends, you know, Hebrew, Kanji, Farsi, Arabic, Thai, English, everything, Czech, everything you can think of, and blends it all together. And it's what I feel like I see at festivals is a blend of people. So if I were to write a language that was the hy hybrid of all of these different cultures, It'd be this language of light, which has an infinite character base because it's written freestyle. There's no thinking about it. But then I incorporate that into the land because sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm seeing, seeing that in nature. So just observing my surroundings and trying to think of cool, organic-looking kind of ways to give them more style or, or more uh, character. I, I, I like to examine like different kinds of ways of doing that and, and create series out of it in the process. So I hear that you like telling stories in series. Yeah, I, I, I feel like um, with the ability of, of being an artist, you have the um, you, you kind of have the task of also being a messenger of the people for the people by the people. And when I look at art and then all the history that follows with it, it's, it's, it's kind of documented eras in which human beings lived in. Yeah. And I feel like the art I, I'm trying to create yeah. should be documenting the type of feelings and um, spiritual guidance or, or lack thereof 
um, and blend of cultures that I feel um, and to represent where I'm at in history. And th that bright color too is just is, is there's a, I, I feel like the music that I'm always painting around and the, yeah. and the groups I'm always painting with and types of people that are showing up with the bright color outfits it, it that's all being documented not through writing but through visual representation. Yeah. And do you have paintings where you um, put on canvas the language of light? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're def they're on my uh, there's some of them on my Instagram and I I, I typically incorporate it uh, in a, a large scale of, of all my paintings. There's only a, a few, even this one here, that don't actually have it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super interesting. Uh, I remember last time we spoke, you, you mentioned that there was one painting you could think about that would be uh, like a quintessential representation of your love loss experience. Right, that was the, the, the evaporating man and the with woman the, with the with head the on the platters. The okay, perfect. Yeah, so that was that. it, okay, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to wrap it up with cool. uh, a couple questions. One is, um, what is your ultimate definition of the love story? Um, my ultimate definition of the love story is the understanding of how to allow love to not necessarily be lost but to be understood like to let it go because you love it because you understand it needs to be let go of your life for a certain reason or one or the other or a certain amount of time it's okay to come back to it if it's good for you but you have to learn how to love yourself most importantly before you can ever choose to take on loving any situation or anybody because you will lose yourself in that if you don't understand what you're letting go of. So by understanding that I could love something enough to let it go out of my life because I love it, because I know it's good for that and it's good for me too, I'm going to be able to learn so much more about life and be so much better off by providing that and a deeper understanding of what love is.